Have you ever struggled with getting the perfect mix? It can be frustrating when you have all the pieces that make up a great mix, but something just doesn't click. That's why in this video, I'll be giving you my five most valuable mixing tips that have helped me immensely over the past few years. Follow these tips carefully and you'll end up with perfect sounding mixes every time. So let me show you how. But before we start, if you want to get your mixes to sound like pro songs, I highly recommend checking out Sage Audio's Mixing and Mastering Membership. As a member, I have to say the experience has been incredible. Just for signing up, you'll receive 10 free mastered songs with your own dedicated mastering engineer, unlimited mixing feedback, and in-depth audio courses, but more on that at the end of the video. Tip one is something I like to call advanced referencing, and it's something I hear very few people ever talk about. The idea is simple enough, it's the same concept as standard mix referencing, where you AB or mix back and forth with a few professional mixers and compare the differences. But with advanced referencing, you take that same concept, but get a lot more specific on the details and start to break these mixes down into certain frequency areas and stereo channels. For example, say you have a reference mix that you really like the low end on, and you aren't sure what's missing from your mix to get yours closer to your reference mix. Instead of listening to the entire mix to try and figure out this problem, you can use some clever plugins to analyze these specific areas. Taking that same example of the low end issue, I've got two different mixes here. Mix A is my personal mix and mix B is my reference. Now using the filters on this plugin, I'm able to isolate the low end of my reference mix and then AB this back and forth with my own mix. From solo and the low end, I can hear that my reference mix is using a subtle sub bass during the chorus section. Now that I know this, it's something I can go back in and add, or at least compensate for, by boosting the sub frequencies of the bass track in my own mix. You can also apply the same concept to different channels of both your mix and your reference mix. For example, maybe you really like the guitar sound in your reference mix, and you want to hear the guitars more clearly to try and replicate this sound. If these are hard panned, which they commonly are in most mixes, you can solo the sides of your reference mix, which will help give you a better idea of how the guitars sound in comparison to your own. Now tip two is all about side chaining. It's a tip I've personally found really helpful when working on heavier styles of music, especially the kind with heavily processed drum sounds that can be tricky to get right in the mix. It's a very similar idea to the standard trick of side chaining your bass to your kick drum. However, in this case, this tip is all about helping your snare cut through the mix. I've always found that outside of vocals, the snare is the most important thing in a mix. So getting this to cut through a dense composition is crucial. What you want to do is take any mid-range instrument that plays throughout your mix, so a very common example would be rhythm guitars in a rock mix, and sidechain this to your snare drum. That means every time the snare hits, it will duck the guitars slightly so that the snare drum can cut through the mix more easily. This also has the added benefit of adding in a subtle pumping sound to your mix, much like you would get from master bus compression. My only warning with this trick is that you may want to avoid using it on particularly fast songs, or consider automating the sidechain on and off during snare heavy moments like snare rolls. Tip 3 is to EQ after your effect plugins. This is very important if you use a lot of modulation effects when mixing. It's crucial to clean up any of these effects afterwards, whether you're placing them on certain tracks or using them as send effects. A good habit to get into is to always EQ after the effect plugin, or at least check to see if you need to add any additional EQ afterwards. A lot of effects plugins, especially reverbs, will add in a ton of unwanted and unnecessary frequencies back into your track that you probably wouldn't have even noticed otherwise. After spending all that time sculpting your perfect sound, you don't want to then go and ruin this with a reverb plugin that adds back in all the low end and mud you've just taken the time to cut out. So make sure you check what your effect plugins have added in frequency wise before moving on in your mix. Tip 4 is to use less plugins to help simplify your workflow. It's a very simple point, but also something you should really keep in mind. 
It's easy to get carried away with buying the latest channel strip from your favorite plugin company or getting the fifth version of an 1176, but really you only need a handful of plugins that you can rely on for every mix. By limiting your options, you save time. Instead of scrolling endlessly through a list of unused plugins, you can quickly think what your track is missing and grab the one plugin you know will work best for this job. So I'd highly recommend going back through your plugin folder, removing anything that is rarely used and in turn simplify your workflow. And lastly, my final tip for getting great mixes every time is to mix for the genre you're working in. This means having a good understanding of the typical sounds that most people would expect to hear within certain styles of music. This may mean that you want to specialise within a few specific genres instead of trying to master them all. But having said that, it's a good idea to familiarise yourself with a wide range of music and a wide range of mixing styles. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to get your mixes to sound like pro songs, I'd highly recommend checking out Sage Audio's Mixing and Mastering Membership. As a member, I have to say the experience is incredible. Just for signing up, you'll receive 10 free mastered songs with your own dedicated mastering engineer, 5 additional free mastered songs per month, unlimited mixing feedback, and in-depth audio education courses to get your mixes sounding like pro songs fast. Not only do you get to have your mixes mastered by your own dedicated professional mastering engineer, but you also get access to all of Sage Audio's education course curriculums and multi-track sessions for mixing practice, so you can learn how to create your own pro mixes and masters. Additionally, the membership offers you unlimited mixing feedback from Sage Audio engineers and community members before having your mixes mastered. This is highly valuable, giving you access to a thriving community of producers and engineers who can provide you with quick feedback on what could be improved first before your mix is professionally mastered. Also, being able to hear how a professional masters your mix first is a great way of improving your own skills. So getting 10 free mastered songs when joining, plus 5 additional free mastered songs every month, is really going to pay for itself. So if this sounds like something you'd benefit from, and I'm sure you would, use the link in the description to get a 70% discount on the membership, which brings the total cost down to just $15 per month.